Typical day on set. Typical day on set. Um, we wake up from having not really slept. Um, we get out of our sleeping bags because we're sleeping on the floor of a crappy house in the living room because there are no bedrooms for us or bedroom. And Thomas proceeds to step on my glasses, uh, breaking them apart. And I couldn't wear contacts because it was the desert and there were dust storms every day and it was super dry. So then he went into the kitchen and cried into a bowl of cereal. Mm -hmm. And I tried not to lose my mind because mm -hmm. I really can't see without my glasses. Blind. And, and um, then the day just got worse from there, pretty yeah. much. That was in the beginning and there was a windstorm. So we had to redo our schedule as we went and move all our exterior day shoots to s turn around our schedule so we were shooting interiors. And then we get into the chaos of production in which for 12 to 14 hours, nothing stops. Pretty much a... For a 17 day shoot, I think we did a pretty good job of sticking to 12-ish hour days. Yeah. So we were on a tight schedule that. with actors because they were SAG and we didn't want to mess with it too much, so. But yeah. we worked, I mean, everyone worked really hard. We had a really small crew. Yeah. Like really small. And I, I, I felt very strongly 10. that I got, I got really sick for one day. So it wasn't true, but every other day I was like, I'm gonna be the first one working and the last one working because I don't want anyone else to feel like we're not doing it together. And I think it also creates a better morale on set if you do that. If you're like, if you're packing stuff up at the end of the day, if I don't have to be scheduling or meeting with an actor or something, I'm packing stuff up with you. That was. But it really did never. I mean, it never ended. No. It never ended for. Not us, for us. For yeah. our producer, for our line producer. Yeah. I mean, the four of us, for our AD, for the DP. I mean, yeah. the DP was you know transferring cards till you know whatever o'clock in the morning and. Our AD was frantically trying to schedule with us because we had to make a new schedule, you know, every On the day. fly, yeah. Um, we had like this great shooting schedule that made so much sense and we were so proud of it and it got totally scrapped, you know, on the first day because of the windstorm. Mm -hmm. And then we just kind of rolled with it. It was a very scattered answer, sorry. Well, can we talk about the snakes and spiders? Oh yeah, so the house that we were staying in, the crew house, um, my dear parents came out and cooked for us, which they had no idea what they were getting into. God bless them. But um, they were going through I may have cried into my cereal, but Rebecca's dad, I think, cried like every day for a week. He called my brother <laughs> in tears saying, I didn't know it was going to be like this. I mean, granted, they were working with a kitchen that didn't actually have a The stove didn't stove. work. <laughs> and they were, you know, cooking in like 30 minutes from the nearest grocery store, and like that grocery store was really bad. And had to prepare the food and then drive it 15 minutes and set up a table on top of a pool table and serve lunch and then break it all down before we started shooting again. Anyway, yeah. they were in their own private hell. Yeah which they were not telling us about. And they walked outside of the kitchen one day and there was this snake coiled, you know, a big snake coiled outside on the patio. And my mom, even though she has grown up in Los Angeles and knows what snakes are, like has lived in the desert her whole life, was like, oh, it's a fake snake. It's a toy snake because it's not It's plastic. Moving. It's made out of plastic. Why isn't it moving? I'm gonna poke it with a stick. Just to make sure it's fake. Just to make sure I it's think fake. it's a plastic stick, but in order to make sure, I'm gonna poke it with this stick. Then she gets my dad into the mix. They're both standing there poking this fucking snake yeah. with a stick. Turns out the snake was very real. Nay, nay. There was another step. <laughs> the snake started rattling. Oh yeah. To which they <laughs> responded, "It's a battery-operated toy snake." They're like, it must have a battery that it's, that it's making this rattle sound. It's like, clearly they were, you know. They had lost their minds. They had lost they their minds. They were desert crazy. Yeah. Luckily, they did not get bitten by the giant rattlesnake. Yeah. It was real. Yeah. The end of the story is that it was real. It did not 
despite them, thank God. And it, but it camped outside of the house for two days, and so we'd get home after like a 14-hour day, and it would just yeah. be like lying in front of the front door, and we'd all be like, oh God, what do <laughs> we do? It's still here. Yeah. Is that a real term, desert crazy? I mean, do, do you go yes. into a psychosis? Okay. So here's the thing about the desert. We were always like, oh, the desert's so great. We go out there every year for New Year's, and we, like, we're real desert people. Yeah, we no, hang no, out. No. Nay, nay, nay. After spending a month in the desert, you understand why people aren't supposed to live there. Yeah, why and everyone's people crazy. People who do yeah. live there are insane. Yeah. They're all insane. And also, it's so very different to like vacation there and versus trying to actually do something in the desert. Right. Like when like you are something. at the mercy of the elements, it is a brutal place. Even yeah. at the best of times, it's brutal. Yeah. It's just inhospitable. Yeah, so hot in the day and so cold at night. And so dry. I mean, everyone by the end of the shoot just looked oh, like yeah. they were 100 the years old. The artist was like dying because all like, of like every there, all everyone. the actor's skin was so dry. Yeah. You know, everyone was like peeling. They got sunburned. And it was yeah. just poor Ashlyn. Yeah. She did a great job.